my thing to fortify it. And um, so I started, you know, really accessing, you know, the, the rhythmic uh, properties, you know, a lot more. And um, I would take phrases and then I would chop the phrases up and I would re-register a lot of the information mm -hmm. within those phrases. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like the way a, a, a stride that I would play. Right, right. So that, that became like my, my visual and oral focus almost um, to, to, to have a, um, some sense of polyphony on a monophonic instrument, like a duality, you know, right, so sure. comping with yourself and, you know, a call and response and, and you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, these, these are the visions. And also um, dealing with motives you know, a lot stronger, you know, having um, catapults, you know, things that, you know, that, that provide a basis for improvisation. A lot of musicians, they play licks, or they play, you know, um, prescribed content, and this is more like total recall. They, they memorize something and they recall it at the right moment. And I wanted to, to try to vibe for true spontaneity, mm -hmm. even if it didn't work. Right. You know, because right. sometimes, you know, the missed mark is better than what you were going for in the first place. Absolutely. So, I, you know, I just wanted to be as completely improvisational as possible. So, um, that as well as... Um, a, a, a very in-depth study of uh, a lot of harmonic accesses that had that have since been um, eliminated from the lexicon. People don't do anymore. Uh, I started to uh, extract and transcribe a lot of chamber music mm -hmm. and uh, to see, you know, like you know, more exotic chords and and also you know different ethnic musics and uh, indigenous music just to see what would happen if you juxtapose some things that you know are recommended sure. to go together. Sure. Right. Sometimes you know, um, you know, the yield is, is triumphant, and yeah. then a lot of times yeah. it's a complete train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> but you won't know until you make the experiment. Right. So it, it was a, a, a really um, fertile and fruitful period of experimentation and just trial and error, and there were a lot of triumphs. It, it seemed like when you joined Jack's band, um, it certainly sounded as if all of you guys were of like mind. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like all of those things you were trying out, and, and, you know, you and Gary Thomas, another one of the great voices of, of this generation. Uh, what was that like joining Jack's group? Because you guys were really working a lot for a couple of years. Working a lot. Um, that was actually one of the best environments for, uh, I mean, okay, I, I, would, I, would call, I call that now leadership school. He taught me how to be a band leader. Right. He's very liberal. Uh, he didn't draw the hard line, do this, don't do that. It was like, try it. Right. It was always, and if you did, you did something, he would always say, keep that in there. That was really it. You know, let's do that again. And he was very zealous in his interest of what, you know, what everybody was doing. He would call me in the middle of the night after a really good gig. And, you know, in the whole time, hey, man, that was some really cool stuff. Explain it to me. I'm like, Jack, it's four in the morning. You know, he really wanted to know. And he would break out his, his little portable piano. He come to my room, show me that. And he was... Genuinely honest and, and, and genuinely uh, intrigued, yeah. and to be in, in the company of some of an elder who was that interested in what I was doing and told me to bring a lot to the party. He played my compositions. Right. I was more or less musical director. Yeah. Um, I arranged, you know, a lot of music for the, the for the um, for the recordings. I actually I contracted you know, the musicians for the band. I you know called wow. Gary and Lottie and um, my, um, Mike. Uh, Michael Caine. Mike Caine, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, you know, so, um, I, and I actually turned down the offer to play in some other rena uh, groups of renown because I, I figured that they wouldn't be as forgiving right. or, you right. know, willing to, to let me stretch like that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it surely was a great band. I mean, you did three records with I that band? Three yeah, and uh, all three of them are just fantastic. And you mentioned something about how the uh, the apprenticeship model uh, seems to be uh, losing uh, a little bit of this uh, momentum these days. But you specifically, uh, I know, have mentored quite a number of young musicians. Uh, Jason Moran, uh, the, the man who's playing with me tonight, Rodney Green. Um, Ambrose Akimusri talks about you all the time. So uh, when you talk about the apprenticeship role in jazz, is it something that you feel that you consciously do or it just, it, it has to happen as just natural order? A bit of both. Yeah. I mean, 
I feel a, a sense of, of obligation right. to give and to, to be available and, and to be willing to, to make sacrifices for a lot of younger players because, you know, you know the, the, uh, the bed of roses was laid out for me. And uh, you know, a lot of you know the elders were very, very generous with the information they gave, they gave me the time in Bradley's. I mean, you know, right. buy somebody a drink, and you know, next thing you know, the sun is up, and you're sitting up talking to Oscar Peterson right. or you know Tommy Flanagan or Art Blakey or Elvin Jones all night. Mm -hmm. and, 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 yeah, yeah, they're breaking things down that that aren't documented, right. you know. And, um, and so you know, through my my own personal trials as a leader, as a, as a musician, as an artist, I have to pass the baton, yeah. you know, in, informationally speaking. And um, that, that only serves to, you know, to fortify the music, um, to fortify the ranks, and, and to instill spirit in people who, for, for, for their generation, you know, their, their, their only uh, option is to go to school and get it, oftentimes right. from people who are very learned, but they haven't gone on the road. They haven't played with anybody, so they're great academics, but they're not great practitioners. Right. right. So, um, you know, each one teach one, as they yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before we play another song, I want to ask you, do you find that a lot of the younger guys coming up on the scene actually kind of actively seek you out to ask you certain questions? Because you mentioned Bradley's. Hmm. Uh, I think there was a time where, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, Bradley's was like one of the greatest institutions in the world. It was a little jazz club in Greenwich Village, but you would go there and every jazz legend you could possibly think of would just be in there hanging out. And you could go get an impromptu uh, music lesson at any given time. And uh, I think we couldn't wait to go down there and get information from those guys, and no matter how harshly they put it to us. You know, just couldn't wait. Do you find that a lot of younger guys are still, they want that information? Absolutely. I mean, especially now, I mean, uh, I'm even more accessible, or we're more accessible, right. given, you know, global digital access. I mean, with the punch, punch of a button, people can hit you up on Skype or on your phone anywhere. Right. And uh, it gets to be a bit overwhelming because you, you, find, you find you don't have enough time for yourself. Right. But, I, you know, I just can't turn people away. And, right. and a lot of times I sacrifice... <laughs> You know, attention. You know that should be uh, attuned to my own right. ways. You know, just to help people out because I, you can just see, you know, the longing in their eyes. You know, and and it, for me, the reward is not the paying me. The reward is to see when somebody can get it. The realization that they now can execute something that that's been baffling them for years. Right. That's that to me is the reward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Well, why, don't, why don't we play another song? Okay. Greg Osby, ladies and gentlemen. 